All right. Uh, House of the Dragon delivers yet another filler episode. <laughs> <laughs> this one, and it's it. That's unfair. I mean, filler episodes was a lot. This was the sort of things that uh, CW would do and that kind of thing. It's not quite at that level. I did see complaints about the previous episode, and I think that had a lot to do with following such a spectacular episode. Uh, where, uh, but but uh, judging between the two, uh, the previous episode is a bit more interesting uh, than this one, uh, because a lot of stuff repeats. Although there is some progression in the plots, most notably the storyline for Damon and these uh, hallucinations he keeps happening, and uh, and whoever this mysterious woman is, uh, looks like she has drawn him in at this point, uh, and that what's her end game and all of this and is he broken now I mean uh, his, his guilt has weighed him down about his brother and, and about him and Renera and all that sort of stuff uh, has played out and uh, now he's becoming dependent uh, on this woman it appears uh, as it goes goes forward uh, the rest of it, the title is Small Folk, of course. Uh, the Forgotten uh, Peasantry, yeah. <laughs> who are many in number as, a, as compared to the ruling faction, of course. Uh, you've been seeing the cruelties, uh, certainly out of Aegon. Uh, and uh, uh, don't expect anything nice from uh, Aemon, <laughs> who in a lot of ways is much smarter and more calculating, certainly cunning, uh, than his brother was, but at the same time, he's still just a miserable, pissed-off little boy. Uh, and uh, in, and there is a scene there where his mother's trying to reach him, and he's aware of this, and yet he's still going to push full steam ahead. And he's more about the war and everything, and he's lashing out at other people, and that sort of thing. And that's going to be his undoing, I suspect. Uh, but as far as governance overall. Uh, not really paying much attention to it to their detriment. They don't really realize it until there's uh, a bit of a rebellion that takes place. Meanwhile, the clever idea, uh, th there's food shortages and uh, people are getting desperate and you know, are, are stealing and whatnot. And then so uh, it just gets back to Renera and her, uh, her new uh, special advisor. <laughs> And they come up with the plan of, well, why don't we just ship a bunch of food over there? And so they do. And there's all these uh, boats with the red dragon, uh, you know, symbol. Because <laughs> the, the other guys are the gold dragon. See, that's the teams. <laughs> and arrives on the shore and the peasants are, you know, digging through the beaches looking for any kind of sea life they could use to eat. And then uh, they uh, all of a sudden there's this a boat uh, filled with all kinds of uh, uh, vegetables and stuff like that. And, and they're like, holy crap. And they realize this is all from the true queen, Rhaenyra. So uh, this causes quite the stink uh, in the city. Uh, Alicent and her, her daughter get caught when they, they went to the, the temple to pray and all this stuff. And then the knights come running in. <laughs> we got to get you out of here. And it's really almost too late. And it's really brutal. Uh, take down and fight from uh, the uprising, and so there you go. That's that's exactly the sort of thing that this move uh, uh, made, where the people are turning uh, on the ruling class here because the opposition is the one who fed them, uh, not their their king. Uh, well, or the prince regent, you know, the king is laying in bed. The more interesting scene here is actually. Uh, is, is more in line of what the whole soap opera is, where it's these power games uh, playing out, where you have Aegon who's recovering, and it looks like he's going to make it, although badly scarred. He's going to be basically the Two-Face <laughs> of Westeros, <laughs> at least uh, in appearance. <laughs> Uh, and, of course, uh, his brother goes to make sure he doesn't say anything, you know. And, of course, he's terrified of his brother now. So, of course, he says, I don't even remember what happened. And, of course, you know that's probably not true. And based on his fear and everything. And he's in a lot of pain and whatnot. But at the same time, you know, he's like, oh, God, I better keep quiet. And uh, and all this stuff. Uh, but then uh, Laris shows up, old Clubfoot. <laughs> <laughs> the master whispers and he makes the point he sees opportunity here uh, with Aegon and uh, he's explaining uh, and with his own story about it, he's he's lame and so uh, people didn't take him seriously and yet 
Uh, he's quite the master manipulator behind the scenes. And uh, so he's making a play uh, for Aegon here, and he's explaining to him uh, that a lot of people will won't take you seriously now, uh, you know, because you're gonna walk. You, your, your legs never gonna fully recover. You're badly scarred. People won't want to look at you, and all this. And he's, you know, Aegon's crying and all this stuff. And uh, but that's gonna be to your advantage because they're all gonna underestimate you, so they won't see you coming when you strike. <laughs> you know? So, you know, he's on the one hand, he's telling him the, the absolute truth of his situation. But on the other, he's getting him giving him kind of a pep talk and uh, keeping himself firmly in his corner because he can take his revenge on his brother, who's now sitting at power. And, uh, you know, Laris has already calculated that, you know, Eamon's just not the guy. Uh, uh, now, he's more loyal uh, to Allison overall. But as it plays out, he's seeing opportunity here in Aegon, which originally you wouldn't, because Aegon was quite the idiot. You know, he was just he uh, same problem with Aemon, only in a different way, in that he's still just a boy, and, uh, and you know, not taking things seriously. And what you, you know, by evidence of his foolhardiness of hopping the dragon and flying out there, when he was really no match, uh, he wasn't prepared for it. Uh, so anyway. Uh, that's an interesting thing and he's also show, you know, he knows by his own experience about this is a terrible thing that's happened to you but you're struggling if you survive it it will make you very powerful and uh, he, so he's you know giving him a little tip there and if he can guide him along and also will you know have the king in, in his pocket basically because <laughs> he'll have his confidence and trust and uh, he'll be in a very powerful position himself and so that's a uh, it's a very seemingly simple conversation there you know uh, but nevertheless uh, it's very on point about what the overall uh, show is and I mean, what it, you know, how it's supposed to play out and so uh, to me that was probably the most powerful scene uh, and pretty much saves the episode from otherwise you know kind of repetitive stuff in some sense I mean you get a uh, you know they won't let Rhaenyra ride the dragon because she's the queen and they, they got to protect her which makes perfect sense i mean it's it's couched way too much in the sense of oh man you know they just don't think women or anything it, <laughs> they sent her aunt out there <laughs> because she was the best they had and she was doing pretty good it's just even had a bigger dragon <laughs> and i mean what good would that have done if that had been Rhaenyra? because then it's all the war is over you know you're at the seat of power look what happened to Aegon. he decides to, the same uh, advice was given to him and you know but he ignored it and ran out there and and nearly died uh so and he's male but they still wanted him protected because he's the king and that's the whole point of this uh if you want the seat of power then there's there's obligations and positions you're going to have to hold but to turn it into this oh the men don't respect me because i'm a woman type thing and that's the, the overall argument here and there is credibility that she would have frustrations for it but by now, it's good Lord, she ought to be smart enough to understand it. Uh, and I mean, it, it's her children at risk and that sort of thing and her anguish over it. And eventually, if things were to the point and, and really bad, it, it would force her hand that, well, she is a dragon rider. She's going to have to get out there. And, 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 and that would be the case. So they're looking for a new uh, dragon rider. Um, but... Uh, they find somebody that they think has some noble blood as a knight and they offer him the chance and he's well, all right, I'll be honored. Well, of course, the dragon doesn't see it that way, so he barbecues it. <laughs> so, it's, it seems like it's going well and then, oh, no. <laughs> Meanwhile, the, the dragon, this was called Sea Smoke. <laughs> so what does it do? It heads out to sea, finds yet another, uh, I, I don't know, cousin of the Targaryens, what have you, this being Adam chases him down adam is like oh my god i'm gonna be killed by the dragon but it turns out no the dragon uh, wants him to be its his, his rider so it's one of the this is really even more so than previously shown of i mean i, I suppose yeah the uh you know khaleesi being the mother of these dragons and so on and so forth and certainly how it ended and everything but that there is uh, quite a bit of sentience w within the dragons rather than just being animals. Of course, the people in their religions view them as gods. 
And uh, maybe the, the idea is that, no, they really are. <laughs> um, but then we've seen them die and stuff, so I don't know. But anyway, uh, this dragon deliberately, uh, I guess, can sniff the true royal blood <laughs> Targaryen and salt this guy out. And so there you go. Uh, and at the end, when uh, Renea hears that sea smoke has been seen flying around and has a rider, she's like, what the hell? So that's it. She's not going to listen to anything. She runs out to the dragon cave, hops a dragon, and hauls ass <laughs> to go see what this is all about. And uh, maybe have a new ally in all of this because they, well, they need more dragons and stuff. But then, of course, the guy's untrained and everything. But I suppose she could do that. In the meantime, the only thing that anyone talked about was the lesbian kiss, which wasn't really that big of a shock. <laughs> I mean, they've been developing this through the episodes. It was obvious this sort of thing was going to happen. And, uh, and it was a, well, that's a sign of wokeness. Not necessarily because they did do groundwork on this. Because when you look in their youth, uh, Rhaenyra and Alicent, boy, they were a little closer than just besties. You know, I mean, they, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and, and had they not been interrupted by the games of power and whatnot, which is what's corrupted them, you know, and it's the sad story uh, uh, about it, they probably would have been a lot more than than just buddies, you know. But anyway, uh, so th there's enough there to uh, say that the scene in and of it where she's complaining about things and she's talking about Damon and doesn't know if he's really behind her or not anymore. Uh, of course, she's unaware of him descending into apparent madness, <laughs> perhaps well, <laughs> through supernatural means. Um, uh, but she couches that all to that, well, he's everything I wanted to be. I wanted to be a man and all this sort of thing <laughs> and all that. Um, the, but it, there is the problem of, you know, you were generally attracted to him and, 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 and intrigued by him and all that. And he used that Uh to try to worm his way back to power uh, from what his brother uh, cast him aside from, and so on and so forth. And, and the aspect of it is that, well, Rhaenyra didn't really want power. I, She certainly wants it now, and uh, it seems like she was pursuing it, you know, quite vigorously throughout this narrative, not just because of Damon. And so the idea was that, oh, she's the, the one who deserves it most because she didn't initially want it. Uh, she didn't think she was going to, you know, it was going to be an opportunity for her, but her father named her the heir, you know, and that set her on the course. And once you're on that course, just to stay alive, you've got to pursue it. That's the nature of it in this. So a few stumbles here. Yeah, I think so. And could it get worse? Uh, sadly, yes. I mean, if they're suddenly going to do that where it's all, boy, you know, everything would run great if just the women were in charge. Well, they have been in charge. <laughs> Things still went to crap. They're, they've been in positions of power. That's what, why this is referred to as, as a game, because it is. You know, and it, it's the power plays that go on. Even when you're king or queen, you, you, you don't really have all the power. Uh, and that's how that plays out. And again, and it, nothing has changed. Uh, there, there are no heroes in this story. Uh, they're badly flawed all over the place. Everyone is, but no one really rises to uh, to anything really good. It's all in the who's going to win. And you, you know, there's moments of sympathy and feeling sorry for them and whatnot, but none of them are really good. Not really. Uh, only the dragons. <laughs> only the dragons come across as good. And uh, maybe even innocent here and there. <laughs> so anyway, um, there you go. Uh, basically, it's yes, the tactic of uh, manipulating uh, the peasants, which is another part of the game, uh, and stirring up trouble there uh, rather than just full-on uh, military strikes and whatnot. Uh, you know, it's a clever move in that aspect. And they left themselves wide open for it. But the best scene is uh, Laris and Aegon. Um, which is more to the core of, of the story. So, there we go. Two more left for this season, and they'll probably save their big next spectacular for the last one. Uh, hopefully the penultimate episode has a little more of that leading up to it, uh, because uh, even though I'm defending them, 
it's it's not totally unfair uh, to refer to these as dull and, and boring, um, but that's the nature of it. I don't know uh, unless you cut it down to six episodes instead of <laughs> maybe you could tighten it up. Uh, but nevertheless, anyway, so far more or less so good. Uh, there's some stumbles. It's troubling, but uh, 